creating clusters. As you can see from the annotation here, the create cluster command effectively creates a container, an empty container which you will then use to plug clustered tables into the cluster. We can also create hash clusters which effectively sequences, indexes or orders a cluster in relation to a hash table allowing for faster read access but slower updates. After having created a cluster we need to create an index on the cluster key which is effectively indexing the cluster columns. The third stage in cluster creation is assignment of one or more tables to a cluster. We can add a single table as a row source to a cluster, we can generate a cluster with a subquery and we can even create a cluster which contains a join. Let's go and take a look at some examples. Now I'm going to take a look at some examples using clusters. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple single column cluster called show clu. Next I'm going to create the cluster index on show clu. And then I'm going to add two tables to the cluster, which actually consist of data from the same table, but split into two separate clusters, namely category 10, category 100, where category 10 contains values less than or equal to 10 and 100 contains between 11 and 100. This is effectively a cluster of a single table with multiple iterations inside the cluster. So there we have it. I could also create a cluster containing a join in this manner. The only point I want to make is that the cluster generally has the columns in it that you're actually going to add to it with create table statements. Additionally, since I'm creating the same cluster name here, I would actually have to drop the cluster name first. And since this cluster that I originally created first contains two tables, I have to drop the tables within the cluster first before I drop the cluster.